What if I told you there was this new land out there and hardly anybody knows about it and there's a secret way there that's really simple and you can go to this land and you can have thousands of more different types of experiences just or millions just experiences that are currently inconceivable and it's there for everyone there's room for everyone well that is true and it's what I've been talking about for the last four years or so, or more. And that's the way to get there, is to sit and meditate and go within. And what happens is the feeling, the feeling becomes so overpowering that the usual thoughts of, you know, what experiences are, do not compete with these experiences. They are lesser. And so the more experiences you experience in the new land, the more the old stuff just doesn't cut the mustard and you just want more of the experiences in the new land and that is the truest realm of your being you an individual within the concept of time and love <laughs> so just for those who might be, have only seen a few videos of mine or just coming on for the first time, um, I think because of the issues with words and how we interpret words, uh, to, to get any fulfilment out of watching my videos, you really do need to be following, understanding what I'm talking about. Because I've gone on my own branch of truth which of course I believe is the correct one and there aren't there are other people saying similar things and slightly different things and you know there is a a growing consensus towards a singular truth but we're not there yet so to understand what I'm talking about um, you would have to go back I, re I think to the start, um, you know, if I've ever really got interested in someone before and wanted to fully check out, I fully checked them out, you know, I wanted to know, well, probably I haven't done that with many, but um, with a couple I have, you know, and then watched every video until I thought, <laughs> nah, but anyway. I can't try and convince you that I'm the only one with the complete truth or still not complete of course but currently the closest to the most truth as we are at this point and that would only be arrogant if it's not true right so with that said for the people who seem to be continually watching my videos where there's 10 of you or 12 um, I hope you're following you know what I've been discovering over the last year or so and especially the most recent stuff it's it's big stuff the the lust era I, I it's, it's really working um, I haven't had, you know, when a, 
what would typically get me off onto a sort of sexual thoughts journey, you know, and ultimately it leads to <laughs> that carnal desire, um, is getting nipped in the bud very quickly and not difficult at all, but a pleasure. It's like I'm coming out of an error. And that error is to assume that um, finding yourself presented with a, a yearning feeling that you have learnt and society all thinks the normal result to this yearning is to get sexual and carnal and knock one out. Um, Whereas actually it's the yearning to be back with the feminine part of your, the higher power, the creator. Because we, that's our default position has been within our mother. And we are, that is a very, very familiar thing. And as soon as we're born, we are in a sense disconnected when we exit the womb we're physically now disconnected and but at that time we could still feel mother god but gradually we went away from it and that leads to you know not not good, right? It equals not good. And so as soon as you feel an inkling of being able to get back to that, which is the the correct way to be, um, you know, you're up for it. You're up for it. But because of the error thinking, oh, I'm what I'm up for is um, is thinking about sex with someone. And then you do that and you go through with the motions and then afterwards you feel this disappointment, this, well, was that it? Was that what I was hoping for? And so in the soul it's like a, it's a down thing. It's like, you know, look, at, sort of then guilt, you know, looking at yourself and the, what you've just done and thinking, you know, is, <laughs> is this what I'm like? <laughs> Because let's face it, when we were kids, we were much happier, right? So, and we didn't think about those sorts of things. So it's an error that's been drilled in over time. And uh, fixing the error, just... I love it, it on this journey when I've been able to remove so much error purely with a piece of truth. You know, I've taken on a piece of truth and it has improved my life in so many ways. And it, it's not hard then. You have that truth and it's not difficult. There's no difficulty in it. And that's just also when you start, you know, each time this happens, you start to have the realisation that the truth of everything is so much better than we've allowed ourselves to believe. So this is one of those examples that I'm not yearning for sex, I'm actually yearning for my my mother. This brings the whole Freud thing in, it's, it's a confusion and it's, this is kind of triggering people a bit, you know, because there's places they don't want to go. Um, and they're sometimes exactly the places we need to go. You know, you know, why don't we want to is, um, you know, there's a, a list of things it could be. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> It's going to be different for every individual, and every individual will, at some point, 
face one of these issues and it will be their time to deal with that and and sort that out on your specific journey um, right so just sum up what I've just said um, our yearning is to be back with our mother where we feel safe and comfort and and everything and um, our mother certainly likes it too you know she doesn't want to see her children not disconnected not knowing her in error um, and sorry been a bit slow and and we and we're confused and we put it into something else and we continually do it still getting the same results but uh, never come into that satisfaction you can fix this error just by thinking about this possibility this truth and and um, it will change your life for the better so for me it's it's helping me connect to mother god more um, and and my soulmate too but i have talked about this in previous videos so i apologize if i've repeated myself too much i'll i'll uh, try not to do that but this is sort of an update video very much sort of updating on things that I have mentioned before and stuff yeah um, I might as well mention it now I've got a little list last error oh yeah uh, sorry so as it's on the list so I mean I've I've made a video about transgender stuff and you know I've probably, and I've said before how there, you know, no gay souls and things like that, which I haven't changed my mind on. That's, but this lust error has made me consider gays in a higher light, um, and in a sense that they're not making the error. Now they may be making another one, but. You know, I think what's bad, right? You know, everything you do for yourself. A gay person, I think, like, because I've never broken that seal. I've never, you know, just sort of gone, oh, fuck it, and snogged a bloke with tongues. And, you know, I, I've never done that, right? And I probably never will. But had I, at some point, broken that seal then I think then maybe then I would be open to a bit of gay love now and then. I'm not sure, right? <laughs> Don't know about the buggery situation. Probably have to be high on some serious drugs to do that. <laughs> right, and I'm not condemning anyone who does it, right? Do you know what I mean? It's whatever, right? The worst things you could do. So, um, but why I'm, I'm seeing them in a high light because I'm thinking they've understood there's something wrong about this uh, conclusion that um, that you should want to sort of have sex with multiple partners, right? Because that would be that would be the basis of it. If we had this inbuilt desire thing to to have sex with lots of different people, if that was the right thing, um, you know, that would that would not fit in a sense with the soulmate. So the soulmate thing is there's there's one opposite sex member out there for you. And when you're with your soulmate you make a pair. You you become more complete as a soul. That that is the complete soul because it's half male and half female. So when they come together, but they're still separate. And as I've said before in videos, the female soul 
is in the male soul. Very much like the earth, the hard bit, the crust, is within the atmosphere. Think of it like that if you want. And what's happening with the lust thing is you're putting that girl on a pedestal and you're, you're um, sort of almost treating her like God, a God. And that's what's happening. You're actually seeing, because this led me to believe that, you know, there's, I can see, you can see the godliness in everyone. And I think that's what's happening when you see a fine looking figure of a person of the opposite sex. Well, let's speak specifically about men to women, because it's different with women to men, I'll explain. So with men to women, um, if you're seeing them as a god, you're seeing them as mother god, because that's the fact, is you're in mother god. So just as the female soul is in the male soul, both then those souls are in mother god, who's in father god, and so on. So, you're treating that woman like she's Mother God, and you, you know, you want to suck the nipple, and because that's where we got sustenance when we were a baby, and maybe you want to shove your head in between her legs, you know, in a sense, you almost want to get back in the womb. And there's something not quite natural about it, and obviously not all men treat the women like this, but a lot do, and probably more so. So there's something about that which is an error. The gays are not making that error. They're almost, whether what's happening is they're seeing the wrongness of it. So maybe they've still got a connection more to Mother God. So because since I've realized that, you know, straight away I'm, I'm feeling Mother God and like I say the feelings overpower then. I could still think of a female form at that point and it and it wouldn't affect me in the same way. I would just see it as I'm seeing the godliness. I'm seeing the godliness that is, comes through to everybody. God made us all and we've all got that godliness coming in and in some ways it might show up in their, in their physical form and in other ways it's deeper in somebody's personality, you know, you could probably say rule of thumb that the better looking you are, the more you still need that uh, that type of reassurance that you're okay. <laughs> I could think in a sense, you know, for to be in an ugly body from birth, say, or disabled or something, your soul would have to have some strength to be okay with that and live your life like that. So you, anyway, I'm not going to go there. Right, so gays aren't making the error. Now the difference with women is that, okay, so what's the woman experiencing when the guy is treating her like Mother God? She's almost experiencing it like the love of a child, in a way right and so she's almost experiencing being that god now when i was finding out my soulmate and everything i i never had the same lust for my soulmate and as i was getting close to understanding the feelings from my soulmate and i came to understand that my soulmate is within me She's in there, all the time, all the time. No lust, but when a, lo a loving connection would occasionally happen, and it would be sexual, but it was totally different to what I generally, I say since the age of about 18, I started to look at women as being like, yeah, you know, I'll be a dog rather than, say, a friend of mine who had loads of women, and he never treated them like that. He was always like, you know, the man and everything, you know. But he treated them like shit, and he never stuck with any of them. So, you know, it's... 
I am. <laughs> my experience has generally been to look at women like this, but I was wasn't able to do that with my soulmate. I can feel my soulmate within me now. So what does it feel like for the woman? Yep, I've just said, you know, if they're getting worshipped like a god, it, it's going to be sort of a, a like a child love thing, and it's got a bit kinky because the air a bit. So then, when a woman is treated like like it should be, like she is within the man, you know, then, but it depends on the man then, because if she's surrounded, she's with the right man, but he's got no connection to God, doesn't understand the reality of things, the, the female soul then is restricted in what she's able to connect with. Which I've done a video about that. Um, so, uh, where are we? Then les lesbians would be like what men do a lot to women. So it'd be one woman put another woman up on a pedestal and like, oh my god, and maybe they can do it to each other and they're then experiencing that that feeling in the sense they're getting so it, it will almost like it reminds you of mother god so when a picture of a pretty girl comes in your mind you know it reminds you of mother god sparks that opportunity to feel mother god but <coughs> your belief system makes the error to think it's carnal stuff, the carnal kicks in and then you're in the carnal so next time I get a trigger that sparks off that reminder of Mother God I'll feel Mother God and that's what I've been doing I hope that puts it in a, a nutshell right moving on well, I uh, <laughs> keep seeing my name. I think you know the the kicking into the carnal phase is like an inbuilt trick, and it's there by design, and it's to um, is to keep the population going. You know, is to keep people procreating. Uh, absolutely. You know, it's meant to be there. We were meant to keep procreating so that we've got lives to come back to. It's like a trick, I think. Kind of phase. Okay, why don't I let that lead me on to this one? <clears throat> so, the more I've been learning about the soul, um, it got a little bit complicated um, because I was thinking, hang on a minute like, my f female part of my soul is in me but also the one love is in me and how are they both in me and, and yes I've been thinking about this and since I've been feeling examples I get I'm more, I'm more aware of how they are in a slightly different place, obviously different feelings. And what I've realised is that, you know, you can only really concentrate on one thing at a time properly. You know, where is your attention? And this is your intention, you know? So you, you've got to have your attention on something. So rather than sort of in my mind placing, oh, well, the the feeling when I get the one love is slightly higher up and it's more sort of there and then she's like, you know, instead of that, I'm th seeing it as phases, like a different phase, you could say dimension, but I want to say phase and I'm going to give an example of what it's like. Um, a, sim a simple one, just a simple analogy. So I'm here in my room, my attention is the room. 
Okay? And maybe a bit outside, you know, see the leaves on the window. Or my attention is in the video and and I'm talking to you in the future and there's my attentions on that. I could think about the nation, the UK, and then my attention will be on national things. So you see how it changes, and then my attention can be on the world, it could be on the galaxy, you know, it could be on the multi universes. So there are different phases of, you know, different levels of thinking. So in the soul, when you're feeling things of the soul, there's different phases. And, and last night, so I'll be defining these phases more, but there is a physical phase where we have a connection with God as well. And that, that physical phase connection with God is the microbes we're connected to. We're basically made up of half of our mass is microbes. And, um, you know, so when I've been doing stuff before, uh, you know, when I first began in this, first began, the first sort of stuff I'd do is I'd uh, lay there and if I felt a tickle, say, on my hand or something like that, you know, I'd just, I wouldn't scratch it, I'd just allow the tickle and, you know, that, so God is in total control of all the microbes that are with me. All the time. God is in complete control of them. Because right? the life force within them it would be God's. Like all the little animals and the creepies and crawlies. The life force is God. And um, yeah, so I, have, I, mean, I have thought of that before and I probably have mentioned it. But like, that is like, that's like a one phase you can get into is feeling these microbes and what they're telling you. And I'm also thinking that quite a lot of what I feel internally, what I perhaps have thought, well, is this a soul feeling then, is actually these microbes. Now, there's loads of feelings that I've had in the deeper ones are definitely not microbes. They are, they are a different phase, right? So I'll carry on with explaining it. So I could be, for example, so I could hear a truth and the microbes in my gut go, yeah, that's true, yeah, whoa, yeah, that's true, that is. Because they know, because they're life force of God, right? Alternatively, it could hear a lie, and they're like, oh, there's a bloody lie. And you get that feeling, oh, this is a lie, he's lying. And that's going to be useful. No, because, I mean, I always felt, you know, you can feel truth, definitely knew you can feel truth, and I've had experiences, but, in a sense, understanding that it's microbes, and they're always there, right, always present, don't have to get in any sort of smoke to make them happen, I probably should still experience more, before I say conclusively, but it will make it easier to contact with my microbes, and just check, you know, the more understanding you have of something, the more it's going to work right. Okay, so then, so take another phase then, you know, um, feeling um, the creator of us, our mother and father, higher power, this universe, um, the male of this universe, the female of this universe, which we, the children, are in. So, you know, and I start feeling like something on the crown of my head, but it's sort of, it's, it's not microbes, it's not the same feeling, because it has a, it feels like it's coming from somewhere. So I'm not just feeling the bit on my head, I'm feeling the direction and the source of it. And then being able to allow that feeling to come straight down into my heart area, like where I feel the core of me is. You know, so now this is another phase. This is a, a deeper phase than that. And so just as it's definitely a deeper phase than the microbes one, 
but equally deep on this phase would then be the connection with Mother God. You know, I haven't. I've had smidgens of times where I've, I've, um, or maybe more than smidgens, but feeling God at the same time and as that they are as one as well. You know, and that that would be a different phase. But also feeling Mother God would be a very different phase because we're closer to Mother God. We are, you know, connected to, right touching all the time in totally Mother. And then there would be the soulmate connection be another phase. So rather than thinking of these things, oh, they're in different parts of the soul. and It's just that the soul has different phases and then the soul is doing a repairing phase or la 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 la, right? Or, you know, revealing truth phase, you know, so, yeah. I think I've done that now. But, you know, this is just, yeah, because it, I've, it's had to be sort of, to be able to sort of comprehend things and understand things, I've had to sort of broaden the uh, scope of the what I can visualise and everything else. <coughs> Land of experiences, I did that. The beginning, soul phases. Uh... Alright, might as well say now. I can't remember when it was now. Probably about a week ago. I saw God for the first time. And it's. I saw the face of God for the first time. Now, I wouldn't say it was 100% clear. There's probably more definition to come. And it was definitely a woman's face. It was definitely Mother God. And it wasn't on a body, you know, it wasn't a head on a body. And it's it's come as a graduation of as I've been connecting with God and getting closer and closer. So when I started meditating with my eyes open, I was, uh, you know, I've been getting used to that. And I was seeing faces, and often it would be my soulmate's face, and sometimes I'd think, is this God's face or not? But is it. I'll, well, stay with me, right? So. I've been meditating with my eyes open. I've had encounters where the perception of what is there can start changing and can barely see anything. And then it's sort of like a, it's definitely got a colour tint to it. Like everything just appears to have this yellow tint or it could be a red tint, even though I'm looking in the same direction, same lighting and feeling Mother God and so there was this one night and I was feeling it and I felt this like feeling that I've had all throughout my life every now and then and I've actually called it Michelin Man but sometimes it makes you feel like your arms and everything and your body is just really really thin or not even there at all barely and because of this connection with Mother God getting stronger, I kind of thought, you know, is this like Mother God? And it's I'm st I'm just still ninety nine point nine nine percent sure because there was something. It was a bit, you know, it was sort of quite unexpected. It wasn't like a you know, I felt Mother God before with glorious feelings and it's made me cry because, you know, you know, it's wonderful. You know, I've had those. So this wasn't like that. This wasn't, but this was more a sort of a reality. And I almost got a sense of, like, Mother God thinking about if it doesn't like me. I'm just mentioning that. Anyway, the tint was red. 
and I felt like, you know, I was this thin everywhere and I totally, sort of completely consumed and in front of me and where I'd usually see my soulmate's face, let's say that big there, you know, God's face was that big and higher up and I saw, and yes, it was sort of made up partly with the things on the wall, like I think that picture, I don't know if you can see it, the one with the frame was one of the eyes um, but one of the other eyes which one of the eyes was a, a clear eye and one of the eye looked like a square and I think that was the picture in a sense so that's why I say it wasn't full but there was a you know area where a nose would be in a mouth and like some when you see faces and stuff like that you know they often change they often seem to have an expression which is you could say is meaningful or not but, yeah, it was, to me, it was like, that, that's, that, there I am looking at mum, and there she is, there's mum. It's, uh, yeah, I, I suppose just sent me bloating, blagging, and won't be believed, but there we go. I saw God, so I saw God. And also, I had it had come partly from, I had a dream, and this was working out this lust stuff, and there was this girl in the dream, and and at one point I noticed that she was still hanging around, and I looked, and I thought, gosh, she's really pretty. But I didn't want to screw her, you know, that wasn't, that didn't come into my mind in the dream, but waking up in the morning, remembering, and thinking, oh, I wonder who that is. You know, who's that supposed to be or something? And or maybe it's an angel or, you know, and that's, well, what's an angel? And, um, but what seemed to, you know, agree with the microbes, <laughs> see, use it already, is that it, it was Mother God and that a dream I'd had a, a little while back and then I was thinking, well, that was probably Father God then. And I, because I thought that might have been an angel. And I've had dreams before where I definitely thought it was God in a dream. It was undoubt in my mind. No doubt. So I think I'm becoming to prove that, you know, God does make spiritual bodies to visit people in their dreams. Or however spirit world works, you know, I... I wouldn't say I was an expert on the spirit world. I see the spirit world as the middle realm. You know, there's the physical realm, there's the spirit realm, there's the soul realm. You know, I've very much been focusing on what's going on in the soul realm as it's the dominant one. And I have experiences of dreams and seeing spirits and hearing spirits a bit. But I wouldn't say I'm... And I'm not, you know, that's not my thing too much. Um, but anyway, so I now conclude, I think, you know, God does visit people in the dreams. And why doesn't God do it physically then? Well, I think, you know, the physical realm is for the free will. It, you know, things have to, you have to be the one to do this and that and the other. You can't, it can't be done for us. It has to be done by ourselves in a you know, from a naive position and everything else. Sometimes I wonder why I make videos, but anyway. Oh dear! <laughs> There's a lot to talk about. I think, um, yeah, I'm sorry, it's gonna have to be a long one. What's the time? 39 minutes, so... Bear with me. I'm gonna make a fag. Take my time and chill. I've told my son he's gotta watch my videos. He's got three years. Three years he's got to watch my videos. And uh it's like but they're so boring. <laughs> and yes, of course they would be boring if you just 
you know, half-heartedly pick one of my videos, press play, think, oh, he's talking way too slow, I want some entertainment, uh, skip to the middle, oh my god, what's he talking about, oh, I can't do this. I absolutely agree, you, you shouldn't. You can do that. Don't do it at all, it would be better. You've got to... So what I said to him, you know, he needs to watch it, watch the first, my first video. And, um, I considered not making him, but I want, I want him to watch at least ten, and they're quite short, some of the first ones. And then I think, if by then he hasn't had, that hasn't given him some faith that, that my videos do make sense, if you... If you watch them from the beginning, you would then know enough about where I'm coming from and everything else to understand what I'm talking about. And, and then it would be worth it. I don't know about these bits. I just decided I want to make a fag. There's a lot of BS going around about what's what's good for you. I mean, they're saying now that wood smoke is, you know, the harmful thing. It's like, you know, they blamed everything on smoking tobacco and loads of people have quit and gone on to vapes, yet the people's health has got worse, right? So what, now they're going to blame wood smoke and go, oh yeah, it was wood smoke. And because if you read up on it, if you look at the websites that are offering information, and it's not very much information, it's not good information. But if you look up on it, they're sort of saying, oh yeah, there's hundreds of known carcinogens in wood smoke, a bit like tobacco. Well, they, that's all I compared wood smoke to tobacco and uranium. <laughs> Fucking uranium. Like, oh, you know, like, Oh, but it's natural, so it must be good, and then they use examples like uranium. Well, you know, it's not really very... They're not doing a very good job, so they're obviously cracking up as they're losing the battle of truth, the, ba the information war that is going on. To die. So anyway, you know... The, the whole smoking thing, the whole, the whole, um, you know, wood smoke, right, we, <laughs> for thousands of years we've been fucking breathing in wood smoke. We thrived and survived. I think they've gone too far, I think, with this one, I think, we gave them enough rope and they've, They've noosed themselves with that one. Absolute nonsense to sort of, you know, and I say go by the smell, right? If it smells good, it can't be that bad. Okay? Uh, you know, when you smell some of the stuff coming out of these cars, um, you know, I'm guilty too, I've got a car. It's horrible, it's disgusting. It makes you want to vomit. I mean, apart from the old leaded petrol, that used to smell lush. So perhaps that wasn't that bad either. And, you know, this does sort of fit in with the thing, is that, like, you know, these forces, they're trying to kill us, trying to get rid of us. And, you know, where's this wood smoke thing come out? Because, you know, we're not, we're not popping our clogs as quick as they'd like us to. Uh, that is far-fetched, because we all breathe in the air, but, uh, or it's just, it's just because big businesses are what rules the world, and they don't want, they just want everywhere to be the same, because it's simpler, you know, and they can, if they can trade with more countries on a free basis, that means they can get bigger, which means they can buy up more of the smaller companies, and, you know, that's where we've been going and just 
you know, it doesn't matter where you go in the world, it just looks the fucking same. People do not want that. People hate that. And people are fighting back against that. La di da. Right. You gotta be calm. Calm is good. Calm my son down. Uh Which one? I've got two, three left. Okay, let's go back. Um, so I've said before in previous videos that I think our souls are four billion years old. And um, I was listening to science radio program the other day, Infinite Monkey Cage on Radio 4. And <clears throat> it was quite good actually. And they were talking about microbes. And the point when they became... Anyway, two billion years ago, so after life had been evolving on Earth for two billion years already, and I would say we souls were experiencing lives, took two billion years for the for the single cell organism to join together with another cell organism which you could say one is the microbe and one is the host for them to um, work together and operate and function successfully but that it may have, there may have been many, 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 many attempts at this within that two billion years. And they don't know because they weren't, they may have been successful for a little bit, but weren't successful. So it took two billion years for this once, for this success to occur. So I was thinking about it and like, so, you know, there we were, these souls, say we'd, it's hard to think what we would have been doing for a billion years, but if it was very, very basic stuff, you can perhaps accept that, and we wouldn't have had much awareness of what was going on. Come down for a life, well, however long that lasts, back with God, sort of thing. Um, so when this, so when we were trying to do this, in a sense, we were then experiencing a physical life connected with God, right? So say a billion and a half years later, one soul is living this life as a single cell organism and successfully takes on a, a microbe which has got and it is then experiencing a physical life with God for the first time. And however long it worked out. Now that would have spread that that soul who was experiencing that would have affected all the other souls by just by way of I guess you know we've been together already for a billion years right we're familiar with the feeling of lots of other souls and then suddenly one of them's like done something new and great right that would trans that would get connected to everyone everyone would know someone's done it someone's done it that would give them more belief that it could be done and la 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 la. Two billion years in, somebody does it and this time it's something which is successful and it's going to remain ever since then. That relationship has continued and flourished. So from the scientist's point of view, they think, oh, who's the real being? Is it the microbes or the host? <laughs> you know? could be either right but from somebody who believes in God it's quite plain there is God with us all the time helping us guiding us right. and 
evolution happens during people's lives. Individuals e evolve. And, you know, there's, I really feel there's an evolving going on right now. Which actually does bring me to something I've been looking at. I just thought I wanted to check some old facts on the internet about uh, genes, you know, genetics, and these haplogroups. And I wanted to check the ages of them. So we've got E1B1 in North Africa, 26,000 years. People who thought to have this gene is Einstein and Hitler. G2A, Western Europe, can't read my own writing, India, North Africa, East Africa, this is an old one, 60 to 26,000 years. People have thought to have that, Stalin, Richard III. L1, Northern Europe, 27,000 years, Bill Clinton and Sting. L2, I think, is a mix between L1 and J1. So J1, Middle East, North Africa, South Europe, 13,000 years. So that's quite a new one. People have thought to have that. House of Saad, Dustin Hoffman. J2, Turkey and Greece, 15 to 22,000 years. So the Js, you know, they'll be similar in some ways. Rothschild. Adam Sandler. Again, newer genes than, than the other ones. R1A, Germany, Eastern Europe, Afghan, 19 to 26,000. It's quite old. People thought to have that. Nikola Tesla, Benjamin Netanyahu. R1B. Now, this is the one. Western Europe. Central Africa, North America. 10,000 years. This is the newest mutation. People who had that, Abraham Lincoln and Che Guevara. Then we've got the ones around the other parts of the world, which I don't have the ages on. They, didn't, they were only offering information of the ages on the other ones, but I think all of these are older. N3, Northern Russia. C3, Northern China. Q3, South and Central America, K4, Australia. So this R1B gene, now look, if an R1B then has sex with an L1, you know, what happens, obviously they get mixed together, right? So I think God might have made it so that everybody has this something from this R1B. Maybe not everyone. You know, and is this like the elect or whatever like that? I think that's possible. But this is what I feel is the truth, you know, because I felt there's a truth in Adam and Eve. You know, I, I felt that. What my microbes saying? <laughs> you know, there's something about this latest mutation of genes. This is God's, you know, got right, you know, he's done these different gene types and they've got different abilities and experience, yeah, they're ready, you know, or whether it's us evolving in some way. Oh. Anyway, they're ready. This being is on Earth. This R1B haplogroup has got the capabilities to do what's needed for God's plan. Uh... Oh, which one shall I save till last? Two left. I'll say the... I don't know. Save the best till last? Which one's the best? Yeah. Okay, save the best till last. So on our previous lives, um, I've recently said that your previous life would have been on a different planet in a different place of the universe. And my current understanding is that We've got two planets in this. So there's pairs of planets in seven completely different parts of the universe. 
So 14 planets in total. So we're here, planet number 5, Justice Light Blue, and we have a sister planet somewhere nearby, quite possibly one of the nearest stars. <clears throat> and um, quite possibly we've all already received a communication from them and a communication has already been sent, but maybe they haven't, they haven't told us yet, but that's what I suspect. Anyway. So, our previous life would have been on, not that sister planet, but the, the planet before, <laughs> number four, all right, Mercy, green. And I've come to a conclusion, or there's a bit of truth I'm running with at the moment, is that we wouldn't be looking like we are. And one of the things that started this is, you know, a man, a woman standing with arms out, legs out, head out, right? There's five, five points. We're on planet number five. With five fingers and a thumb. What, four fingers and a thumb? Five. You know? And then that made me think, well, okay, so who was all this five stuff here? Now, planet four then, would they have four points? There would be stuff about four and it would be quite different then. You know, it wouldn't just be like human but only had one arm, <laughs> right? And I was thinking, you know, because I, I had a dream years ago. It was like this alternate life I was living. And I was American and this wasn't a previous life, I know that, because it was my same mum. It was like an alternate life and had meanings in and stuff. But anyway, and in this dream, you know, everything's cool, I had some sports cars and stuff. And, but I looked behind the shed once and there was this thing there. And I could feel it, this creature, and it was scary as fuck. And it was like an octopus, but with its, with its, all its arms just down. And, um, so that sort of come back to me, that dream in thinking that, we're different beings on these other planets when we incarnate into those, have life on those planets. Um, and so, yeah, you know, a type of octopus that learnt to walk on land, you know, it's totally, totally possible. Uh, you know, it could be, uh, it could be on another one, it could have been maybe uh, in the cat's line, you know, maybe uh, their line and then you know, and they've, on their planet, they've still got monkeys and apes, which are like animal-like still, haven't evolved into a thing like we have. But they're, you know, they're, they're one of their cat species became more, <laughs> you know, possible, right? Possible. Or, do you know, on one planet, it's dolphins or something. I don't know could be just stuff can't even imagine like this octopus thing was honestly it was like different so yeah it could be like that um, but I do think pretty sure that they're different and that's probably why that would those part those past lives would be even harder to remember than our past lives on this planet so if you think your last life was on planet four, and then you were on planet three, two, one, seven, six, and the last time you were on Earth was seven lifetimes ago. That's going to make it again. It's not like it's the last life you had, so again, it's going to be hard to hard to remember. But if you start to remember them, like people have, uh, first of all, well, that's proof, isn't it? If you can remember a previous life, and you're pretty sure it's a previous life, you've had this really distinctive memory and everything, well, that is pretty much proof that there is life after death, if you want proof. Sometimes just nice to have those positive thoughts. Because, <coughs> you know, you can't prove it with a machine and a bit of paper. And the machine will never be able to 
take in all the other dimensions and everything because it's a machine just made in this one physical dimension so it's only ever going to tell you anything about the physical dimension there we go you need to have faith gotta have faith 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 right so that was that basically previous lives on different planets So, the last thing I've got written down to talk about is soulmates compensate for each other. Um, so your soulmate is always there. On the soul level, there you are together. Right? There's no taking you apart, you know, that's it. That's where you are. The more you come in line to that truth, the more you'll experience those that those things. But you are separate. You are separate, but together you are a pair. You're a right and a left. So anything that you do is going to affect your soulmate. Now, percentage-wise and how much filters through to your actual awareness will differ. Or no, sorry, there will be a percentage, whether it's 25% or whatever. So, this is what I'm thinking, right? My soulmate had given up smoking, but still really wants to smoke. And every time I smoke, she gets, say, 25% of it. Say, for example, right? You know, and uh, without even being aware of it, she gets used to that. You know, whether it's a, a thing in the morning, thing in, you know, I should be feeling that nice feeling by now that I feel every day. And I'm sitting there thinking, should I have a fag? Should I have a fag? <laughs> and my soul is like, where is this? Where is this daily thing that I get? See what I mean? I mean, it does looks and sounds like I'm trying to push over my inability to give up smoking somewhere else, but it's possibly true. And it does seem, there are, it does seem like there's some people who just can't manage it, and some people can or whatever, and, you know, some people give up for a bit and then start again. You know, it's like, there's so much going on, so much stuff. But it's possible that that could be having an effect. So the more knowledge, the better. So if this is true, and you don't know your soulmate, it's going to be difficult for you to have any idea what might be going on. But at least if you know who your soulmate is, and you know what sort of habits they like and what they do and and it might start to make sense of how you yourself are functioning and actually yesterday when I was thinking this and feeling about this and I almost started to feel like a yearn for a cigarette came from <laughs> not me it wasn't me who at that point wanted one and so then I was able to, you know, just sort of, you know, because I know about the error of dependence upon other things. I, I do know that. It's an error. I should just, oh, I am really only dependent on God. But we all got this free will anyway. So then I was able to, because this might be one of the times when, so if it's my own craving wanting it, and I can go, yep, that's dependence, wait a couple of seconds, the urge will pass, urge pass, carry on. But if it's coming from somebody else, my soulmate, you know, then I might, I'm might i less likely to understand why I'm yearning and, you know, it's a bit different, why am I, you know, a bit sort of, why am I wanting this fag and just do it, you know, because the 
the yearning isn't ceasing, it's carrying on until you just bloody well go and do it. And I did notice as well one time I was having a fag and it seemed to thank me, it was like, ugh, oh, nice. You know, now, now I'm feeling nice. So yeah, I've got some interesting, uh, interesting things to deal with. It's like noticing more. Um, so I was able to sort of almost say, no, you know, that's not what you're dependent on. Like feeling through to this soulmate of mine. Um, you know, you you'll be quite. Happy. What you really want is Mother God's love or Father God's love. And then the um, the desire went away. So why haven't I stopped? Got this whole thing about wood smoke at the moment. Yeah, I might have to stop soon. They're getting so expensive. It's a ridiculous amount of tax. Right, so yeah, you know, and um, um, also, you know, maybe in, in terms, I was th wondering if soulmates compensate for each other in, in terms of looks as well, like, I get who's watching this anyway, like me and my soulmate, we both seem to have shitty teeth, you know, so... If I was with a girl and she's got amazing, lovely teeth and my teeth are shitty, it's gonna make I mean, it's gonna be difficult. I'm gonna feel like oh. But you know, if she had a wonky tooth or something as well, and you know, probably a bigger issue for a girl as well. You know, and then you both like oh, both got both got, you know, you probably wouldn't say it, but. Neither of us have got great teeth. I don't, now I'm not worried about my teeth. Now I'm not worried about just smiling when I feel like smiling and so on. So, you know, do soulmates compensate for each other like that as well? I mean, according to AJ Miller, your, your teeth reflects how much you're loving yourself and... And I sort of put two and two together and thought, well, how much you're loving your soulmate as well. And anyway. Anyway. I think that'll do. Okay. Um, I keep thinking I'm going to stop making videos. <clears throat> but, I don't know. Now that I've done this one, I have to get to 365. That's a number. <laughs>